make sure you guys smash that subscribe button if you guys are fans of the content being posted onto this channel to always be in the loop with more content similar to this and be sure to hit the video up with a like if you're enjoying the content and with that being said let's begin with rumors of capcom's resident evil 8 having to now resurface once more courtesy of biohazardcast.com we have new updates leaks information and rumors in regards to the upcoming resident evil 8 video game which basically dives more in depth as to what is to be expecting from the upcoming resident evil 8 title as of course courtesy of biohazardcast.com the following article goes to read as follows many resident evil fans were looking towards the now postponed play PlayStation 5 event scheduled for this week in hopes for more information or possibly a trailer for Resident Evil 8 to be revealed. Unfortunately, due to the current state of affairs, Sony has opted to postpone the event. So for now, it looks like we'll have to wait a bit longer to see if anything comes into fruition. In the meantime, following on from our previous articles compiled by others on our staff, including the name of the upcoming title that was also reported by our friends over at Relay on Horror, we have received more on story developments from the latest build of Resident Evil 8 that adds new information and expands on previous reports. Now the following information goes as follows. Disclaimer, the following details have not been confirmed to date, however, due to the reliable and vetted sources we use here at Biohazard Declassified, we have taken all reasonable measures to ensure that all the information, so far as is predictable, is of good quality. As with all rumors, a pin of salt should be taken. Exploring occultism. Occultism will play a big part, but there is no magic. There is a cult that worships the abominations created from the new virus. At first, there are hints at something supernatural, but it is explained by the virus which is in the air, causing hallucinations from time to time. The antagonists. The main villain of the game is called Alan R., a mysterious count living in a castle. He is the leader, or at least a high-ranking member, of quote, The Connections. Alan is also mentioned in an article published by Game Rant on May 15th. The secondary villain is Natalia slash Alex Wesker. There are also files hinting that Blue Umbrella is not as clean-cut as they portray themselves to be. So of course, now we have the confirmation of two possible villains, Alan R and of course, Natalia slash Alex Wesker. Wesker. New playable character, Emily. Parts of the game are played as a mountain resident called Emily, a woman in her late 20s who aids Ethan. She is looking for her family. Emily grew up in the village and will assist Ethan and later work with him to find her father and escape. So now we also have the entry of a brand new character called Emily. The flashlight will play a large role. You have a flashlight and the game is often pretty dark, forcing you to use it. Akin to many other games that are in the same genre, the flashlight can run out of batteries but slowly recharges itself over time. The locations. Aside from the village, Resident Evil 8 is set to explore other locations such as castles, caves, and forests. It will have a quote larger focus on outdoor locations than the rest of the series. The child and evil Chris Redfield? Mia and Ethan have a child. Due to their infections during Resident Evil 7, it is deformed and, by all accounts, not a normal child. They live a pretty lonely life in a remote place and try to hide their child. However, Chris Redfield breaks into Ethan's house, ending in the execution of Ethan's mutant child, following by shooting Mia. Apparently, he is operating on his own and that is not part of an official operation. When Ethan wakes up, Chris is gone. He did not leave Mia to die, but bandaged her. There are some shadowy figures in the room. Ethan is abducted there and then wakes up in the village. So apparently enough, there will be a deformed child. Chris Redfield actually barges in, breaks into Ethan's house, apparently kills the child, and, assumingly by his own accord, tries to kill Mia, but Mia survives. Ethan's Trek Ethan has to make his way through the mountains. There have been disappearances in the region that are unexplained. You will also be defenseless before getting your first weapon a bit into playing, so of course kicking 
kicking things off with absolutely no weapons. The enemies of Resident Evil 8. The main enemies are zombies and pale human-like enemies that of course resemble that of the Ganados. Dogs, wolves, and enemies that resemble liquors do appear as well. There are enemies with swords, knives, and clubs. They appear mainly in the later section of the game where you enter the castle. So confirmation, zombies, check. Pale like human enemies, check. Dog like creatures, wolves, and enemies that look like liquors, check. As of course it continues, these quote werewolf like enemies we are going to refer to going forward as beast men. Judging by the description, it seems more fitting, and it seems their build is more disgusting than normal enemies. This seems to match up with the description of the game being a quote, serious departure and quote, the darkest and most gruesome entry within the series thus far. Now according to biohazardcast.com, this is big information, especially with the idea that Capcom was going to reveal a possible Resident Evil 8 trailer, but of course given the current circumstance of what's going on in the world right now, they decided to postpone that. So we have a possible evil Chris Redfield who cold-bloodedly murdered Ethan and Mia's child. He was looking to murder Mia, but the question here is why. But at the same time, we also must ask, why did they choose to abduct Ethan? Is this somehow going to be connected to the events of Resident Evil 7, perhaps knowing that Ethan and Mia had experienced what they had experienced with the Bakers, and there's something with Ethan that they want to extract or want to get out of, and the idea that the enemies are going to not only be zombies, but also pale like humanoid creatures that not only resemble the Ganados, but the wolf slash dog like creatures are also going to be included, and apparently enough, they are going to be more morbidly looking than any other character, including the characters that look like liquors. So, we're going to be getting characters that resemble that of liquors, but aren't actual liquors, and I think that's what piques my interest because we've seen liquors before, so what does this imply when they reference enemies that resemble that of liquors? Do they talk about enemies that have large tongues, perhaps missing craniums, or something of that sort? It's going to be most interesting to see the overall designs of these enemies, and speaking of enemies, Alan and Natalia slash Alex Wesker are going to be assumingly the main enemies of the game and one must beg the question as to what exactly their role is going to be as of course we already know that the way this game is set up it's obviously going to build towards another Resident Evil game following this, possibly Resident Evil 9, because if you take a look at Blue Umbrella and how they're being labeled as a group that's not really entirely clean, and then you have specific circumstances and events going down in different places of the world involving this virus, then it only paints the picture that we are going to be getting so much more down the line, but when involving Ethan, what exactly are they looking from Ethan, and what exactly is his narrative going to be following the death of his child, following the events of Mia having to be injured by the hands of Chris Redfield, are we going to see Chris versus Ethan at some point? So by the end of all of this, I want to get your thoughts and feedback in the comments section below in basically explaining to me on whether or not you guys are for this or against these overall concepts and ideas, because if you take a look at the main narrative, everything has to do with what happened following the events of Resident Evil 7, of course Mia, Ethan, and their child, and it looks like something may have happened with Chris to where there's possibly some sort of an influence, or maybe Chris is acting on his own accord to want to take down Ethan and his family, but the question here is why? What does Chris know about Ethan and Mia and their family that he wants to destroy in the fact that he's acting alone without any operation following him, so it's most interesting to see that, but on top of this, as soon as we get to this mysterious castle that they keep hinting about, that's when we're going to see such a large presence and a large tone be bestowed because while inside of this castle, we're going to have more secrets revealed, we're going to have more possible enemies actually loom and reveal themselves while in the castle, so I want to get your thoughts on the death of Ethan's child, I want to get your thoughts on a possible evil Chris Redfield, and just your overall thoughts on the direction of this game because 
This game is following a different narrative in comparison to Resident Evil 4, Resident Evil 5, 6, 7, and any of the other games, and this could be a make or break moment for Capcom, but by the end, are you guys excited? Are you guys ready? Let me know your thoughts in the comment section below again. For me, I'm personally excited only because I really enjoyed Resident Evil 7, and I really enjoyed the other Resident Evil games so much so that I'm actually banking for this game to be one of the best within the series. Thank you all so much for watching, thank you all so much for your time, if of course you guys are new to the channel, then I do encourage you guys to smash that subscribe button, turn on all notifications, give this video a big thumbs up by slapping that like button down below if you guys are simply stoked, ready, and excited to see what's going to come from this game once of course they do end up officially giving us a trailer and end up officially announcing it, but out of all of the information provided, what are you guys most excited for? I want to get your thoughts and feedback down below. Thank you all once again, and we'll be seeing each and every single one of you guys down in the comment section below. Have a great day, everybody. Peace.